every once in a while, I log into the Google Ads interface and I notice something that has a new banner next to it, telling me that it's an addition that Google has made to my account. And I'll be honest, sometimes that stresses me out a little bit. But one of the more recent changes I've actually really come to enjoy, and those are setup columns. Now, rather than showing you the performance of certain areas of your account or different settings for your campaigns, setup columns can be really useful to make sure that you have all of the basics covered in your account. So today, I wanna to run you through what the setup columns are, how you can add them, and how you can start to use them to improve your Google Ads campaigns. We're in one of our active client accounts because for us to show you how these setup columns work, we need to actually have something active. The Paid Media Pro's placeholder account won't do for today. But if you're curious, that's why there's gonna be a lot of different things blurred out in this video. We apologize for that, but you'll still be able to get the gist of how these setup columns work. So with that, let's jump right in. All of the setup columns are in the column editor. So I'm gonna come over here and click columns and click modify. Now here you can see off to the right, we already have all of our regular performance columns. And for right now, I'm just gonna clear those out except for one so that we can have a better view of the setup columns here in a second. I left cost in place because I wanna make sure that we're looking at campaigns with high volume for the sake of this video. As you've probably been able to tell, there is a whole section of columns that are dedicated to setup. And this is where that little new placard that I was talking about popped up and caught my attention. So let's see what's available at the campaign level. When I click to open it up, you can see that there are 10 columns available in this section. Now, rather than go through each of them right in this moment, what I'm actually gonna do is create a full view of just these setup columns so we can review them with some actual stats in place. So let me get those set up in order the way that I want them. Now you can see I have all the setup columns set up over here on the right, and I've got them in a specific order. We'll talk through that in a little bit. But the first suggestion I have for you is actually to save this column set. You'll remember when I clicked into the column editor, it first had a dropdown that showed me a handful of preset lists of columns that I'd created. In my opinion, this setup column section is super helpful and I don't wanna always have to manually set it up. So to save a column set, I'm gonna come down here and click save your column set and I'm gonna give it the name of setup columns. And now I'll just click save and apply. Now you can see the view I have has all these new columns in it, but if I ever wanna get back to these setup columns, I just need to come to columns. And now setup columns is a preset down at the bottom. So I don't have to reset this manually every single time. Let's take this first column here to get started. Number of eligible ad groups. Now Google's definition of this is these ad groups are ready to run. So there's a handful of different things that you need to think about here. Not only does this mean that you have the ad groups built, it means that you have them in enabled status, which means that if you have an ad group that is paused, it will not be counted here. Additionally, if for whatever reason, your ads can't run because either the ads are disapproved, your keywords are disapproved, you don't have any keywords in an active ad group, all of those mean that that ad group is not eligible to show in this column. So let's take a quick example. The first campaign here is a brand campaign. Three ad groups sounds right, but the remaining campaigns on the screen are all non-brand campaigns. And I know they have a good number of ad groups. 15, 16 sound right, 46 is fine, but this three is a bit of a red flag. And it also tells me in the status column that things are eligible and they're limited. They're limited by search volume and there's a number of other things going on here. One way these columns are super helpful, is you'll notice that the text is blue. So if I wanna investigate why I only have three active ad groups, all I have to do is click on the number three and it takes me to the campaign and the eligible ad groups. You'll see that the filters are already set up so that we're only seeing the enabled ad groups that are eligible. So again, like I said, depending on how you have your campaign set up, they're only gonna count a certain number. So if I remove the eligible filter, you'll see there are a number of ad groups that are not eligible because all of the ads are disapproved. So this would be a good signal for me to go in, fix my ads, get things back up and running. Pretty easy process. The next set of columns I like to look at together because they're all about the number of eligible ads and any of your ad ratings or disapprovals. So the first one is gonna be the number of eligible ads. And this just means that they have been reviewed and approved to run by Google. They comply with all the policies and they'll be shown to all of your audiences. The next is gonna be the number of eligible responsive search ads. Again, these just mean that they are eligible, so they could count in that previous column, but also they're not expanded text ads. They are only responsive search ads in this section. These two columns together already are a really easy way for me to try and make sure that we have responsive search ads rolled out and to also ensure that we have enough ad variants running in each of the different campaigns. 
It's not a perfect science, but it does help you audit your account and make sure you have things set up relatively well. So again, this first campaign is brand. It's been running for quite a while. And although we only have three active ad groups, we have 12 eligible ads total, but only two of them are responsive search ads. That tells me that at minimum, we have at least one ad group that doesn't have a responsive search ad in it. So if I see that, that's something that I wanna go fix. It also tells me that there are a number of ads in that campaign that are expanded text ads and that we're relying on an old ad format that we may need to go back and audit to make sure that messaging is in line, to make sure they're performing better than the responsive search ads to keep them active. It's just a really good gut check to see what's active where. Now this next non-brand campaign is set up pretty much exactly how I'd want it to be. We have 15 ad groups active, we have 45 total eligible ads, and all 45 of them are responsive search ads. I mostly just use these columns as a gut check to make sure that things are set up at least in line with what I want. Take this last campaign down here, for example. We have 46 eligible ad groups and 138 eligible responsive search ads. That's three responsive search ads per ad group. That's where I want it to be. But you'll notice there are 368 eligible ads. If you do the math on that, you'll realize that that's eight eligible ads per ad group. So on average, there's five eligible expanded text ads per ad group. For me, eight eligible ads in an ad group is too much. If you've watched the most recent video on ad copy testing, you'll remember that I said anywhere from two to five variants is what I would wanna see. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out at the top of the screen right now. But that just goes to show that this campaign probably needs a little bit of cleanup. We need to narrow that number of eligible variants down to about five. Just like we did with the eligible ad group check, if you want to, you can easily just click on this number right here and it'll take you to all the eligible ads in the campaign and you can start to pause them that way. For now, I'm gonna leave it. The next column helps us dig into the responsive search ads that we have eligible. And those are the ad strength details. Ad strength metrics are only for RSAs. So in this first line, you'll see that there's one in the poor column, one in the good column, because there's only two eligible responsive search ads. The 10 expanded search ads in this campaign will not have ad strength reported. At a very high level, this is a great column to utilize to try and find where your ads could be improved, especially if you notice that you have a number of them in the poor category. So let's take this second campaign here, for example. It shows that there are 45 total ads, 10 of them are average, but 35 of them are poor. So if we wanna find out why Google has given them a poor rating, we just need to click on the number 35 and it'll pop us into the ads tab within this campaign. Again, all the filters are set up to find only the eligible poor rated responsive search ads. And then you can come in here and highlight over each of the different ratings and find out why. This one wants you to try including more keywords in your headlines. Same thing here. But if we come down to this fourth one, you'll see that we need to include more keywords in our headlines, but they also wanna try and add a few more unique headlines and unpinning some assets. Now, as we've talked in the past, ad strength and quality score are not necessarily metrics that we try and optimize for because they don't make us any money, but it can help you ensure that your ads are getting shown as often as possible and in as prominent a location on the search results page as possible. Back on the campaigns tab, the last one that I want to look at for ads is just the number of disapproved ads. This is pretty straightforward. If your ads are disapproved for any reason, they'll show up here. If the number in this column is not zero, it seems like we have a problem. So, so far, four out of five look good, but this last one, not so much. So I can easily just click on the seven and it filters for all of the disapproved ads in this group. And you can see what the reason is and work on fixing it. So again, this is a really easy way to find what problems are going on in your account and get them remedied quickly. Now that we're done with the ads columns, I've scrolled over just a little bit because I wanna show you the next set of columns. That's going to be around the different assets, formerly ad extensions, that are set up in our account. The first one is the number of eligible site links that are legacy. The definition doesn't really do much to help you here, so I'll get off of that. But effectively at this point, I just wanna make sure that those columns are all zero. If there is a site link that is in legacy form that's in this section, I would go on, click on it, get it upgraded, make sure everything's squared away. Now I use the second eligible site links for upgraded site links a bit different. Here I wanna make sure that we have at least four site links eligible for every campaign. So here we can see that there are seven, five in the first two, and those are look good, but there's only three eligible for the next set. So just like everything else, if I wanted to remedy this situation, just go over and click on the three, and it takes me to the site links portion for this campaign specifically, and I can start to add in new site links or maybe add new ones at the account level, 
just to make sure that we've got everything in place the way we need it. And we have at least four or more site links running to fill out that entire four pack that's available from time to time. The next column is very similar, but that's just for eligible images. Unlike site links, image extensions or image assets need to be applied at the campaign level. So if you notice here, we only have two in the brand campaign, but there aren't any in the next three. That tells me I've got some work to do. I need to go grab some images and apply them to each of the campaigns to make sure that we have those image assets in place. The last two columns are just based on the number of keywords you have active in any given campaign. So the first is gonna be eligible keywords. Again, these are the keywords that are eligible to run and you have no issues with these. Obviously we like to see any sort of number here. So if you notice that there is a zero, you probably have some issues and you need to go get your keywords remedied or you just forgot to put keywords in that campaign. If you do see a zero here, the next thing I would do is check your disapproved keywords. Did all of your keywords get disapproved or just a handful of them like all of the campaigns that you see on the screen right now? Just like everything else, if you do see that there are some disapproved keywords, all you have to do is click on the number and it'll take you to your keyword list and tell you why things are disapproved. Now, one nuance here is that I think Google actually has this named poorly. Not all of these keywords are actually disapproved. First thing to notice is that the filter actually just says that the status is not eligible. It doesn't say disapproved or anything like that. And in the status column, the two keywords that showed up are only low search volume. They're just not eligible because there's no traffic. So if you don't have any active keywords or you notice a high number of keywords in that disapproved column, I suggest that you check it out before you assume that the keywords are actually disapproved because they could just have low search volume. Now the last way that I like to use this eligible keywords column is in conjunction with the enabled ad groups column. Here you can see we have 15 eligible keywords and three eligible ad groups. On average, we have about five keywords per ad group. In my mind, that's a solid number. This next one, we have 15 eligible ad groups and 119 eligible keywords. That's about 24 keywords per ad group. Now, if I think about it, that's probably because there's an exact and a phrase match version of each keyword. So it's about 12 keyword ideas in each ad group, and that's okay for me. But if you start to notice that there is a huge number of keywords and a lower number of ad groups, you might wanna start thinking about breaking out your individual ad groups into tighter themes so you can have better correlated ad copy and landing pages to those keywords. As you can tell, as I'm talking about this, my favorite way to use these columns is in an audit type of situation. Whether I'm actually doing an audit for a client and that's the only work we're doing, or if we're running the account on an ongoing basis, I can use these columns to get a quick overview of what's going on in the campaigns and understand where I might need to spend some of my time. Now, so far we've only been looking at the campaign level, but the last thing I wanna show you are these setup columns at the ad group level, because they can help dig in a little bit. Let's take the campaign that I have highlighted right now, for example. I have 15 eligible ad groups and 119 eligible keywords. Maybe I wanna double check and make sure that we're not too heavily weighted in one ad group or another. So let's go ahead and click into this campaign. To get my setup columns back, I just need to get those applied by coming over here. I'm gonna create a new custom set again, but at the ad group level. I'm gonna clear out all performance and get all of my setup columns in place just the way I had them for campaigns. You'll notice here that there are only nine columns available rather than 10. And that's because we don't need an eligible ad group column because we're already in the ad groups view but all the other setup columns are just the same and they're available here. So again, I'm gonna save this column set and click apply. And now I'm able to start to see what's going on with the campaign and investigate a little further. So the example I was using was about the number of eligible keywords. And I chose this campaign for a specific reason because you'll notice in this first ad group, there's actually no eligible keywords and there's no disapproved keywords either. There's just no keywords in there. That just means this ad group has no keywords in it. And I have a hunch there are a number of other ones because again, I picked this campaign for a reason. So the last thing I wanna show you is that you can utilize all of these setup columns as filters, whether at the ad group level or the campaign level. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I just come over here, click add filter. You'll see that there's a drop down next to setup. And then all of the different columns here are available for you to choose from and then customize that filter however you need. So for now, I just wanna click number of eligible keywords and then we'll say it is equal to zero and then click apply. 
So now you can see there are four ad groups in this campaign that have zero eligible keywords. Three of them have disapproved keywords, which is what's causing the issue. And one just doesn't have any keywords in it in general. So now I know what I need to do. I need to go get the keywords added to this ad group. And I need to work on getting the keywords in the other ad groups either resolved or replaced to make sure that that ad group can be active. Overall, I personally am a big fan of these new setup columns. It's a really easy way to find out how your campaigns are set up and identify some problem areas. And I think the greatest thing, quite honestly, is that all of these are linked. You can easily just click on the number and it'll take you to the view that shows you exactly what the problem area is. So you can look to fix it really quickly. If you have any additional questions about these setup columns or any of the other metrics available in Google Ads, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.